Hello and good morning friends. Welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in this session we would be continuing with our series on business organization. In the first half we would be discussing on organizing function of management whereas in the second half we would be discussing on types of organization and for this very discussion on the two topics we have once again with us in our studios Dr. Vijay Bratarya. Dr. Vijay Bratarya is an assistant professor in department of uh, Commerce, Shahid Bhagat Singh College, University of Delhi. Dr. Arya has immense experience and he has and is contributing a lot in the area of academics. So I believe that his experience would enable us in understanding the today's topic in detail. Dear friends, I know that you might have lots of questions pertaining to today's lecture and some questions you might be developing while listening to the lecture. So if you want to ask questions from Dr. Vijayabrat Arya, then you can call us right in the studio. You can contact us through a toll-free number. Our number is one eight double. Zero double one zero four three zero. I repeat, our number is one eight double zero double one zero four three zero. Friends, you are requested to call in the last ten minutes for the easy flow of the lecture, as well as we believe that after listening, your questions would also be resolved today within the live session only. So let's welcome our guest, Dr. Vijay Bratarya, once again. Hello, sir. Welcome Thank to the you. lecture. Thank you. Good morning, viewers. Uh, today we'll be discussing the topic uh, organizing. This is another important function of management. In this particular case, the subsequent elements of the func uh, this organizing, important elements, its importance, features of organizing, different activities involved in the organizing process will be referred in the first half. Subsequently, the different types of structures of the organizations will be referred, different forms of organization will be referred in detail. So to begin with, we can start discussing the concept organizing. So organizing is a important process which is a pervasive process as well, which take into consideration the different resources available in an organization and how those resources can be utilized in most efficient manner is the important area through which this organizing addresses the key aspects. So this thing we can have a pictorial presentation here and in this pictorial view you can see that different set of personals are there, they are waiting for their position to be placed at a specific location while this particular hand is there which is basically the executive that is the top executive who is placing these employees or the personals at an appropriate place considering their skills, considering their specialization and the other important areas as well. This, this way we can understand the organizing that organizing is required to address the issue of how and where the placing of the human resources or the other important resources can be placed. Subsequently, it can set the relationship between the top executive and the other personals or the members of an organization. So we can have the uh, detailed concept of organizing that is it helps in deciding how best to group and synchronize organizational activities and resources. In other way, we can say it is a process of grouping together human resources, establishing relationship between personal through departmentalization. It also helps in task allocation to every group and individual employees and it also defines the role of each and every individuals in terms of the authority and responsibility. So considering these areas or the concept of organizing, it has now become important to subsequently refer the authority responsibility and accountability aspect that we will be discussing a little later when we will be defining the organizing and some of the important processes. Now we can have a clear cut definitions given by some of the eminent professionals in this regard. Stoner, Freeman and Gilbert has defined organizing stating that it is a process of arranging 
and allocating work, authority and resources among an organization's member so that they can achieve organizational goal. Subsequently, Louis Allen has defined organization stating that organizing is the process of identifying and grouping of the works to be performed, defining and delegating responsibility and authority and establishing relationships for the purpose of enabling people to work most efficiently. So in both of these definitions, this is clear that the resources, whether it is the human resources or the other resources need to be arranged in such a manner that how much objective of an organization can be achieved. Subsequently, allocating these resources in such a manner that the objective of the organization can be achieved in a best and efficient manner. Therefore, the concept of authority applies there how to delegate and subsequently when it is delegated then the responsibility part how it can be referred to and subsequently the accountability part is also referred in such cases their importance is very relevant in the case of organizing function now we can look at the nature of organizing what exactly organizing state it is a grouping of personnel here if you refer the visual you will find that it can be a large group it can be a small group but this group will be made based on the skill and the specialization or the kind of command they are having subsequently the another nature of organizing is that it is for the common objective of the organization and not for the individual or personal objective or the department level objective Therefore, the objective of the organization is important rather than the objective of the individual that is the personal or the department. The third important nature of the organizing is that it implies, it implies basically the division of work means that total task is divided into the members of the group which is based on the specialization or we can say based on the efficiency and the effectiveness of those personals. So we can refer this in terms that if someone is very good in terms of the marketing skills then his task will be applied, he will be employed in the marketing division and not in the finance or the accounts division. So this is a division of work. Subsequently the persons group together in such a manner that similar nature of activities are referred in a specific department that will be referred subsequently when we will be referring the elements part of the organizing. The fourth important nature of the organizing is that it is a cooperative efforts. It means that majority of the persons will have to have a willingness in terms of helping each other and this helping hand has to be the vertically as well as horizontally. It means that work together, a spirit has to be there, therefore this organizing is a cooperative effort. Then it is another uh, nature of the organizing which refer to the communication. In this particular case this is the integral part of the organizing that to have a communication from the superior, from the subordinates so that any gap can be avoided because that can create a kind of embarrassment that can create a kind of a situation where the problem may arise and therefore proper communication, proper information has to be passed on to the subsequent authorities so that timely or a remedial measure can be taken in an appropriate period of time. The next nature of the organizing is that it is central directing authority. It means that there will be a top executive who will be holding the command, who will be authorizing, who will be delegating the authority, who is giving the orders and subsequently the subordinates have to follow it. They have to be responsible for what has been delegated to them. Therefore, the controls concerns 
efforts of the group the another important nature of the organizing is that it emphasizes on the rules and regulations which means the orderly and systematic working of members has to be ensured through the in house rules regulations codes etc which emphasizes in terms what is right and what is wrong what need to be done and what is supposed not to be done and subsequently last nature of organizing is the dynamic elements which emphasizes that the managers has to emphasize in terms of considering the sentiments attitudes and behavior of the personals this is important in terms of understanding the values this is important in terms of applying the ethics this is important in terms of considering the kind of delegation and understanding the informal organizational structure that is very important in such cases now when we refer time and again the concept or the term authority this is time to refer this concept what exactly the authority mean authority is important in terms of understanding the power and the right an individual is having over the other so while defining the authority it is basically power and right of an individual to use and allocate the resources efficiently in order to take decisions and to give orders at the same time it is the right to take decisions inherent in a managerial position to tell people what to do and expect them to do the same thing as instructed it basically flows from the top of the organization to the bottom level of the organization that is superior has the authority over his subordinate it means it is down downside movement subsequently the authority without responsibility may lead to misuse of authority this thing we can have in terms of the visuals as well where the top management is delegating the authority and they have the authority over the subordinate so they are instructing and subsequently the subordinate have to follow what has been instructed to them then another important aspect is the responsibility aspect in the organizing this is another important element in the organizing this is basically the obligation part to whom the authority is delegated so in this particular case if the authority is delegated to the subordinate then this is his responsibility towards the superior or his the higher authorities so it means the responsibility in an organization is the subordinate obligation to complete the task assigned to him in a proper manner and this is reverse to the accountability it flows from bottom of the organization to the top level of the organization it means the subordinate will always be responsible to his superior and here it is very important that without adequate authority responsibility leads to discontent and dissatisfaction among employees because if the adequate authority is not delegated not transferred to the subordinate then the responsibility or the responsibility of the subordinate is something inadequately referred this thing you can refer through the visuals as well how the subordinates are referring the responsibility towards their superiors the last important element in this three hierarchical uh, relationship is the accountability aspect which is basically the answerability for the final outcome so the one who is the overall in charge will be answerable it means he will be accountable and there is no excuse in terms of whether this was not his responsibility whether this was delegated to someone else it means he will be answerable once authority has been delegated and responsibility accepted one cannot deny accountability at the same time delegation of authority empowers an employee to act for his superior but at the same time the superior would still be accountable 
for the outcome. Now if we refer the another visuals we will find that these are the six different processes simplified processes in the organizing. In the first one if we refer the different jobs have been designed different colors have been referred so there may be a kind of repetition you will find so it means that different job have been identified designed as such in an organization subsequently they have been grouped they have been grouped here in terms of forming department so it means if these three boxes are there so three different jobs have been defined which are of the similar or common department for example sales marketing advertising sales promotion research and development so this this task may be referred to a grouping for a particular organization like this subsequently in the third process of the organizing it is about the creating a hierarchy in this particular case the executive are appointed over the department so that they can look after the affairs of the personals in an organization within the department level and subsequently the distributing authority process is there in this particular case the authority is delegated in such a manner that the subsequent process of coordinating and integration uh, activities is taking place where the two different department heads are tying up are basically communicating with each other whenever the kind of assistance whenever the kind of communication wherever the kind of information or the task need to be completed so this is a kind of coordination taking place between the departments and the department subordinates and subsequently the differenti differentiating positions is taking place where a specific department can be segregated in such a manner that it will be responsible it can be directly accountable to the higher most authority in an organization and if we refer the four important elements in the organizing process then first is the activity identification the second is the activity grouping the third is the assigning duties and fourth is the delegating part which means the authority delegation and now we can refer the different components within these each elements that is emphasized in the organizing process as far as the first element was activity identification in this particular case different task required to be completed or need to be assigned are set or basically determined in such a manner so that the activities and jobs will be based upon objectives and nature and size of the organization the second element was the activity grouping in this particular case the activities are grouped into departments or say divisions which was based on similarity and common purposes as we have referred the example of the marketing department which referred the marketing sales advertising research and development etc and this activity grouping also refer for the purpose of specialization coordination and control the third element is the assignment duties it means what need to be done by whom is something decided here and in this particular case the departments are allotted different positions and each position is occupied by an individual which is basically based on the specialization and his capabilities to do that particular task it also create responsibility in terms of ensuring certainty of work performance or work completion the fourth element of organizing is that of the authority delegation it means individuals are given authority to carry out the responsibility assigned and this takes place through the chain of command which is the successive delegation of authority and it also ensures that one accountability and who are his subordinates so these four elements are referred while referring the organizing process and now we can refer the important features of organizing 
and their subsequent concern in an organization. So the first one is division of labor which emphasizes on the dividing organization into various departments. That is basically the grouping aspect as well. So based on the skill, based on the specialization, a department can be grouped into say finance, marketing, procurement or say production or etc. any other else. Then second feature is the pervasiveness. This is essential as this is an important part of the management whether it is the planning, staffing, directing or controlling. So in such a manner the organizing is also essential and applicable everywhere in an organization. The third important feature is the goal achievement which means that grouping of activities, structural relationship, bringing people together and tying them just for common goal is the feature of this organizing. The another is the integration. Integration in order to develop uniformity in an organization and the next is the organizational structure which emphasizes on defining authority responsibility at every position in order to get the work done in a best possible manner. Now we can refer the importance of organizing. This is essential number one in terms of the long term strategic planning this is important. In terms of arranging the existing human resources this is important and if you refer the other important uh, emphasis of this organizing then we can refer it helps in plan implementation because it comes subsequent to the planning process. This is the tool of division of work. This is important in terms of best possible allocation and deployment of the available resources. It establishes the smooth relationship between the top executive and the subordinates and it helps in assigning the task which is again basic part of the division of work. It encourages the good human relations within an organization. It helps in assigning the authority, responsibility and fixing the accountability aspect. It also important in terms of effective coordination in diversified organizational task and last but not the least it helps in effective use of information technology. Now we can refer the organizing process and if we can refer in the visual the first two part are of the planning and subsequently these four at point three, four, five and six are the part of organizing and subsequently the staffing directing and controlling is there. So we can now refer the organizing process which emphasize initially on the identification and classification of required activities. Subsequently the grouping of activities in order or in the light of the resources and situations available and at number five or the subsequent part of the organizing process is the delegation of authority and the last in the organizing horizontal and vertical coordination of authority in order to achieve the objective of the planning process. Now we can divide each of these four activities in detail so that we can better understand what exactly the concept of these four activities was. So we can refer that a organization can have different set of activities so identifying those activities and subsequently grouping them is the important process of organizing. So in the first one we can refer say identifying production, delivery, maintaining personal, marketing, compensating, quality control, risk analysis, purchasing, research and development, auditing etc. So this is the initial process, part process of the organizing which emphasize on the identification of the work activities to be associated with the organization. In the subsequent one, second one, these activities are grouped together depending on the departmentalization which emphasize like the case of marketing which can have the previously defined or the identified activities into say selling, advertising and delivery. At the same time the operation department will look after the 
production purchasing quality control related activities the finance department will look after the accounting budgeting compensating or say auditing activities at the last the human resource department will look after the recruitment activities training and development activities maintaining personal activities can be the part of this and in the last two activities we club together these two activities we will find that it is about the delegation of authority and subsequently the vertical and horizontal relationship of the top executive with the subordinates or vice versa so this we can have again referred through this particular organizational structure where at the top level the general manager is there which is having the four departmental heads and these department heads are subsequently referred through the minimum two subordinates one is the production head administrative head in the case of operation manager and in the case of finance manager the account head or the budget section head is there and in the case of marketing manager it is having it is supported by the promotions head and the product division head while the hr manager is looked after through the recruitment office head and the personal maintenance office head so this is all about the organizing process the importance you have referred so you must have be very well you know come to know about the organizing process and the important elements and uh, the important processes that have you know emphasize on the organizing whether it is the authority the delegation of that the responsibility part and the accountability part so thank you so much referring the another important aspect of organizing that is the types of organization where we will be referring the concept of organization the different functions in an organization involved the different types of organization categorically the formal organization informal organization flat organization tall organization line organization the functional organization line and staff organization matrix flatter and project organization so this we will be discussing in detail under this lecture so to begin with the concept of organization as you aware that any organization require a kind of coordination among its human resources so that the task assigned to the different organizations or the departments 
or the personals in an organization or say departments can be in such a manner in a smoother manner so that the objective of an organization can be achieved in an efficiently manner. So, an organization is a logical or the strategic arrangement of individuals or groups of people that collaborate to achieve certain goals. Here the goals of organization is prime as we have referred in the case of organizing as well. And in other words, we can refer that an organization has a management structure that determines relationship between the different activities and the members associated with that and subsequently subdivides and assigns roles, responsibilities and authority to carry out different tasks. So in this particular case, we can refer organization is having the human resources and is having and they are allocated different departments within that the different hierarchy applicable and they have to work within that whatever task assigned to them through their executive the top executive it has to be followed and this is what the delegation of authority says and they will be responsible once they accept the delegation of authority and this is where we can refer the important or the essential characteristic that make an organization as a strong or a good organization. So the first is that they must have a well defined organizational goal. It means if the organizational goal is not well defined like what exactly the objective of an organization, how that objective is going to be achieved, till that time it is very difficult to assign the task, till that time it is very difficult to coordinate among the different stakeholders that is the different divisions or the departments in an organization. The second important characteristic of a good organization is that each branch or say department must have an in charge or the division head. It means if the organization is supported by the different departments and they are not having the division heads, then it will be very difficult for the departments to function in an efficient manner because the command has to move from the top of the department and if the top position is not filled or there is no head, there is no in charge, then the persons associated or the personals associated in that department will not be able to listen or obey from any other person. Therefore, the in charge of the department must have to be there in order to manage the affairs of the department. The third important characteristic of the good organization is that it has to have a clear definition on in terms of the duties, powers and responsibilities of each individuals. Therefore, it need to define clearly what authority will be there, what the responsibility is there and at the last the accountability aspect need to be referred in detail defining for each and every individual as well as the role of an department within an organization has also be also to be defined in this case. The fourth important characteristic of an organization is that the organizational structure has to be in an the best format that is the subsequent formats that we will be discussing short while say the line organization, the flat organization, tall organization, matrix organization, the project organization or any other sort of the organizational setup. So that is basically defined on the different factors. So based on the specific or the applicable factor, the organizational structure need to be defined and accordingly it need to be set. The last important characteristic of a good organization is that clearly specifying the functions and activities of every individual that is the task, the performance that they need to make need to be clearly defined so that any ambiguity does not arise in such case. And if we refer the important function in an organization that need to be performed 
by the organizing team then we can again further divide it into five major parts the first one is preparing organizational structure which means that what kind of organizational structure is suitable for the existing organization accordingly the organizational setup can be made and this is also important in terms of making the nature important for example if the security issue is there if the information that need to be passed on is very sensitive then in such cases or maybe any other factor is there that is the unity of command aspect is there or the order has to be obeyed then in such cases the line organization is supported at the same time whenever the kind of specialization aspect is referred the skill oriented tasks need to be performed then the functional organization is to be referred so therefore the what kind of organizational setup is there need to be referred according to the factors associated with the type of the organization the second important function in an organization is the coordinate with each department and their heads it means each division each department should have a cordial relation between each other so that any communication gap should not arise and the information should be passed on whenever it is required whenever necessary information need to be communicated to the subsequent divisions any clarification if arises need to be clearly uh, defined clearly obtained and the third important function of an organization is that it is having the long term strategic planning so that also need to be emphasized because an organization is established not for a short period of time but its objective is also to be served for a longer period therefore the long term strategic planning need to be emphasized while referring the type of organization before its setup the another important function in an organization is that effectively monitoring the activities and progress of each department and the individuals associated within an organization that is in order to have a check on what exactly the actual performance is and what exactly they have been asked to do so to make a distinction or to make a clearly performance achievement or the kind of performance the personals are doing this is very essential the another important function in the organizing is that to establish cordial relationship between the management and the employees that is the cordial relationship between the employer and the employee or in other words the subordinate and superior relationship has to be very cordial so that the information can be passed on whenever the assistance is required can be taken care the next important or the topic of the today's coverage need to be emphasized on the different type of organization that we will be referring here so we can define we are starting defining the different type of organizations to so in this particular case to some some of the important organization that we are discussing it is the formal informal tall flat line and military functional line and staff matrix flatter and the project organization we will be discussing so if we refer the first former organization case then we can refer a network of officially authority responsibility relationship when it when this particular case is officially defined then this is a kind of formal organization and this is basically a organization where the activities of two or more persons are concisely coordinated towards a common objective so if we refer in this particular case then the formal structure has been defined and this defined structure is officially the authority relationship or the authority responsibility relationship is well defined it means the commercial division or the contracts director is the authority of the contract manager 
and contract manager is responsible to the contract director similarly the other division is there so this authority and responsibility relationship move according to the formal organization setup but at the same time when within the formal organization setup there could be a possibility of informal organization and this on informal organization is a network of personal and social relations which not established or required by the formal organization but they arises spontaneously as people associate with one another and this is generally take place through the informal gathering which may include participation in games participation in events or club meeting maybe chess group so if we refer the visual we can find the kind of informal organization within the formal organization so in this particular case what is taking place if this two different divisions are club together informally they are having association in an informal manner and the information is shared information is Uh, pass on the assistance is taken so this is a kind of informal organization which is emphasized in such cases so in this particular case a official communication is not required the task can be accomplished or the achievement of an organization can take place in an on informal manner as well the another third important type of structure of an organization could be the tall organization in this particular case the number of hierarchy in this setup may increase which may be minimum 4 and it can goes up to n number so here you can find that many layers may exist at the same time it is having narrow span of control it means the superior is having limited number of subordinate as in this particular case we are finding it is near about 1 is to 2 ratio is there which may ex- which may move maximum up to say 5 but this is again very important because this is uh, if we define the span of control it means the number of subordinates who can be successfully supervised directed and controlled by a manager so although in this particular case of structure that is the tall organization it is more expensive because in such cases the subordinates has to be looked after by the superior so when the span of control is in narrow that is less number of uh, subordinate and superior relations so in such cases the more number of superior has to be engaged and this will be very cost based the cost will be higher and as a result this will be very costly for the organization subsequently there is a kind of problem in the communication in such tall organization model because the large number of people involved through whom information passes and if we refer the contrary to that the flat organization in this particular case the number of layers or the hierarchy is lesser than as compared to the tall organization but at the same time the span of control is increasing that is minimum 4 and it can goes up to 10 20 or 30 in this particular case this is best way of reducing the cost because over large number of subordinate there will be less number of superior so at the same time it improves the communication possibilities or the communication is very fast because large number of subordinate have to report to the less number of superior and if we refer the another important model of the organization this is the line organization and this is also termed as the military organization because this is the simplest organization and in this particular case the one side flow of information is there that is the authority flow and at the same time the reverse flow is of the responsibility it means the board of director is assigning the or delegating the authority to the managing director and they are subsequently giving 
authority to the different division heads that is the marketing manager finance manager and the production division and accordingly this production division is reversing in terms of the responsibility from the bottom level to the top level of the authorities and in this particular case all major decisions are taken care by the executive that is at the top level which are passed on to their subsequent immediate subordinates for necessary action and the adoption and the working out with the progress on the task assigned to them and this is generally take place when the things has to be done on emergency basis when things have to be done in an orderly manner when things have to be done which are pre decided from the top executive which basically need to be executed which basically need to be performed irrespective of the getting the feedback from the ground level or from the bottom level the another type of organization is the functional organization which is a kind of innovation or which is a kind of a supportive in the line organization in this particular case the skill or the specialization is developed so if you refer in this particular case different subordinates are referred for the different other divisions that is for example the functional manager of x division is also referred by the any sp specific project for example project b and at the same time the project manager of the different functional manager or the functional head is also referring for the different sort of subordinates so in this particular case the focus of functional organization is on the specialization which means each function is carried out by the specialist or the one who is having a skill to perform it each person in this particular organization has to perform a minimum number of functions which is predefined and are fully responsible for those aspects of the work and it is used when the owner himself acts as manager of project with the minimum staff depending upon others for functional expertise now the another aspect which is a mix of the functional and the line organization is the line and staff organization which inherit the features of both the these type of organization which is the top to bottom authority delegation and at the same time adopting the specialization or emphasizing the specialization of the personals while taking the feedback or while referring the the authority aspect so in this particular case we can see that it is a combination of line and functional organization and where the line executives and staff are combined together and the doers will be the line executives while the thinkers will be the staff experts and now we can refer the matrix organization which is very important one because nowadays an organization is having different projects and these different projects can be simultaneously executed with the help of the skill oriented or the specialized workforce they are having and without expanding or without making any expansion in the existing organization so in this particular hierarchy if we refer that it is two complementary organization structures that is number 1 the project organization and second is the functional organization which merges together to form the matrix structure it divides the power into functional as well as on the project responsibilities in this particular case there is a minimum conflict between the line and staff personnel which was the limitation of the line and staff organization in this particular case the functional responsibilities are to design quality and control and in the case of the project responsibilities two major responsibilities are there that is the costing and scheduling which is to be taken care by the chief project manager or the chief project director of the organization so in this particular case we can refer that 
individual project in an organization can have different set of persons from different organizations irrespective of their the specialization which will be very relevant in the set of the project performance the next is the flutter organization which is another smooth man uh, smooth uh, functionality of the organization where the cordial or the the drawback of removing glares within the organization is taking place it also emphasize on the strong focus on communication and collaboration which emphasize on improving the employee expertise so in this particular case the two way communication is taking place irrespective of the division irrespective of the superior and subordinate relationship and this is most practical in today's time because this is scalable and logical approach is also adopted in such case of organization the last type of organization in our case is that project organization so when a particular organization set up only for the purpose of executing a particular project or different set of project then the structure within that organization will be referred as the project organization the project manager is the whole responsible person for the completion of the project by coordinating all the activities in that direction if you refer the example then metro train project flyover construction project airport renovation project can be the some of the example in such cases so this is all for uh, today's lecture i hope you have better understand the different concept of organizing and the different structures of the organization if there is any query please let us know so that we can refer them in detail and to just sum up the different hierarchy or the different structures of the organization we have referred the line organization which is the fundamental organization that we have seen when the order has to be implemented in such a manner whether it is in a rigid manner or anything else subsequently we have find the kind of functional organization which improve the functionality in terms of the specialization can be emphasized or the specialist can be referred when first two that is the line and the functional organizations can be clubbed together we have seen the case of line and staff organization then we had seen the case of matrix organization then we have seen the case of flutter organization and the project organization so th there have been some other new models of organization which keep coming depending on the requirement depending on the global change of the activities thank you so much uh, with this note thank you sir thank you so very much for giving us uh, a very very vivacious session where we discussed uh, on the organizing functions of uh, management as well as the types of organizing organization uh, sir uh, we have discussed on the organizing function of uh, the management uh, can we include the hr functions as well as uh, the pr functions of an organization within the management functions of the uh, not exactly because it is totally Uh, refer through a different set of function that is the staffing function within that the hr is categorically emphasized although this is the second important function that is relevant in terms of what has been planned what has been decided what has been the objective of the organization how that objective can be achieved who is going to be assigned a particular task what kind of the grouping would be is something which will be taken care by the organizing but as far as the hr or the personal management is concerned that is a different uh, set of function which subsequently comes after the organizing definitely so dear friends if you have any kind of query do call us and uh, do ask questions from uh, dr vijayvrata arya for that you need to call us through our toll free number our number is 18001104300 So we have also discussed about the types of organizations. Uh, now, uh, 
uh, I'm moving slightly from the topic. Uh, we have seen uh, like uh, the concept of uh, subsidiary alliances or uh, the sister organizations or uh, the concept likewise uh, in the today's manner, the mini banks, uh, they have uh, taken place. So what we call them, these are the part of the organization or in itself uh, these are subsidiary or the mini organizations are the part of the organization. So before that we have a caller right now, I think we should take the call first. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. Please uh, um, tell your name. What could be the factors to emphasize on a specific type of organization? She wants to know okay. the factors. Okay, interesting question. Uh, in fact, uh, before referring to a particular organization, it need to understand some set of factors, although I have referred it uh, in the lecture as well. But uh, just to recall it, say the time in which the project need to be completed, the kind of rigidity or the kind of the human resources available with the organization are some of the important factors that determines in terms of what kind of organizational structure will be the most suitable structure for the existing setup. For example, if the large human resources are available, but at the same time, the kind of assignment is that it has to be fulfilled by the specialized persons only. So rather than delegating it to those who are not capable or who are not having any knowledge or the subject knowledge of the topic, those will be referred who are having the specialization on the subject and they will be delegated the authority to complete that particular task. So this, these are some of the important factors that are referred while referring the organizational structure. Thanks, dear friend. Uh, thanks for calling us and asking questions. Uh, please continue this process of uh, asking questions because we believe that uh, our work is done only when your uh, feedbacks as well as questions reaches us. Yes, sir, I was asking a question though have we have uh, less time left. So, uh, what we will call these? Uh, uh, as, as you have referred, uh, the kind of uh, mini organizations or the subsidiaries, they are the another form where, you know, the kind of holding or subsidiary nature of organization is there which basically control the management of the subsidiaries in this particular case when the 51 percent and above uh, of the control on the management comes then it becomes the holding and the one to on whom this 51 and subsequent uh, control is there it becomes the subsidiary basically yes it emphasize it it uh, basically kind of uh, you know kind of deviation can take place because the control or the kind of decision making powers move from one organization to the another organization. So yes, it influences, it subsequently changes the organizational structure based on this kind of uh, relationship, the holding or the subsidiary. So this is yes, the upcoming phenomena. So we should take a caller, one more caller is connected to us. Yes. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes, please tell your name and ask your question. मैम थोड़ी मेरी इंग्लिश थोड़ी वीक है कोई दिक्कत नहीं है आप हिंदी में सवाल पूछ सकते हैं आप अपना नाम जी यहां पर हम कॉमर्स सब्जेक्ट से रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन यहां पे डिस्कशन कर रहे हैं और आज हमने जो ऑर्गेनाइजिंग फंक्शन होते हैं मैनेजमेंट के और किस तरह की कितनी तरीके की कितने प्रकार की ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस हैं उनके बारे में चर्चा कर रहे हैं आपका कोई प्रश्न है इससे संबंधित आपके टीवी का वॉल्यूम थोड़ा कम कर दें तो हम तक आपकी बात और आप तक हमारी बात सही तरीके से पहुंचेगी अभी मैंने ट्वेल्थ पास की और अभी क्या हो रहा है कि मेरे को थोड़ी दिक्कत हो रही है अपना काम खोलने में मैं आप अपना काम खोलना चाहते हैं तो सबसे जी मैं कुछ मैं थोड़ी सी मेरे साथ दिक्कत हुई ना मैं तो मैं अभी अपना काम खोलना चाहता हूँ लाइक दुकान तो दुकान का क्या है कि मैम हमारे गाँव में कम से कम पाँच सात दुकाने हैं और उसके उसको उनको देख मैं अपना बिजनेस शुरू नहीं कर पा रहा हूँ मैम जी आ, बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपका अरविंद हमें कॉल करने के लिए और हम ये उम्मीद करते हैं कि कहीं ना कहीं आपके मन में जिज्ञासा है इसी वजह से आपने हमें प्रश्न भी पूछा इनकी बहुत ही लाइट सी एक क्वेश्चन है ये ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कुछ काम शुरू करना चाहते हैं तो क्या सजेशन देंगे इसके आप? लिए 
हालांकि ये आज का टॉपिक नहीं था बट फिर भी इसको हम कॉर्डिनेट करके क्योंकि बिजनेस से रिलेटेड है इनकी जो जिज्ञासा थी तो इसके संदर्भ में मैं यही कह सकता हूँ कि इनको सबसे पहले ये समझना पड़ेगा जो जिस लोकेशन के रेफरेंस में ये बात कर रहे हैं कि वहाँ किस तरह की डिमांड है बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली एनी बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कैन सर्वाइव बेस्ड ऑन द डिमांड एंड सप्लाई विद इन द कम्युनिटी विद इन द एरिया सो जैसे इन्होंने कहा कि कुछ वहाँ पे ऑलरेडी बिजनेस रन कर रहे हैं तो इनको ये देखना पड़ेगा कि वहाँ पे किस तरह की डिमांड है और जिसको फुलफिल नहीं कर पा रहे हैं उसमें अगर ये अपना बिजनेस रन करने की कोशिश करेंगे और उससे भी पहले बहुत सारे इसमें भी फैक्टर्स होते हैं लाइक like इनके पास फाइनेंशियल अवेलेबिलिटी कितना है किस तरह के बिजनेस को ये सेटअप करना चाहेंगे समथिंग लाइक दैट तो उन सभी चीजों को देखना पड़ेगा तो मित्रों हम उम्मीद करते हैं कि आपको अपने प्रश्न का जवाब जरूर मिला होगा यूं ही हमें कॉल करते रहें और आप सभी से अनुरोध है कि आप विषय संबंधित अगर क्वेश्चंस पूछेंगे तो हमारे लिए भी आसान होगा और आपके लिए भी वैसे हम ये कोशिश करेंगे कि आपकी जिज्ञासाओं को देखते हुए हम आपसे संबंधित विषयों पर भी लेक्चर्स आयोजित करें और आपकी जिज्ञासा को तृप्त करें सो विद दिस नोट डियर फ्रेंड्स थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग अस एंड कीप वॉचिंग अस कीप राइटिंग अस कॉन्टैक्ट अस थ्रू आर ई मेल आई डी आर आई डी इज इन्फो डॉट सी ई सी एट एन आई सी डॉट इन द लेक्चर इज गोइंग टू बी अपलोडेड ऑन यूट्यूब सून वी वुड बी मीटिंग अगैन एंड वुड बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन अनदर टॉपिक अनदर सीरीज बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टिल दिन टेक केयर गुड बाय थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो वेरी मच